problem. Like that. So let's see. There are still four students there, I think eight. I think they just log in and go back to sleep. That's a problem. I, oh. Do I have any way of putting a chat or talk to that room? Anyone can tell me? Is there any way that uh, uh, there's no way for me to like leave or close that meeting room? You know, now there are four, five, six, seven, eight students still there. Uh, so I mentioned in the chat box, maybe they asked them to leave the class. Oh, but they are not responding. I think they just click join and go back to sleep. <laughs> I think I also announced in the group also. Yeah, please, yeah. please uh, announce it because oh, OK, very simple. You can go in there, right? Uh, okay. Then. Okay, you kick room. everybody out. Uh, okay. can or not? I, I can't see it. I go in. Yeah, because usually the one who start one start the meeting can, but you try to remove everybody out from there. Okay, I try. Yeah, please. Because later I check the attendant, I will surely put all this absent. Then again, they will say, sir, why I'm, I'm absent? All these things, you know. Very troublesome, I that I don't like it. Kick everybody out and then you end the meeting. Well, now we got two meetings here. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Okay, that. Thank you. All right. Okay, so uh, where am I now? Okay, recording starts. Okay, I should share screen now. Okay. All right, so we are going to continue with our DC DC converter. All right. And then uh, last week, OK, we, we talked about uh, why we need to to do switching. OK, so basically is to increase the. Efficiencies, all right, if we are using the always like that, you know, the efficiency is going to be like around 50 percent. So you lost half of the energy in the form of heat. OK, so this uh, switching will actually help to improve the efficiency. But the problem with switching is that you can see that the voltage is not continuous, right? Because they are turning off all the way and on. So you are taking the average voltage. So meaning that, like I said, the current and the voltage are not continuous. They are discontinued. Now, in order to solve this problem, we will need to add some components okay, to it. So you need to add like inductor, OK, and the capacitor because both are energy storage device. And inductor store the current voltage, uh, the capacitor store the voltage. So with that, it will actually convert those switching into a DC. And then, of course, the, the great advantage is that it will significantly improve the power efficiency, as I already shown in the last class, we can go up as high as more than 90%. Okay, so losses is there. Obviously, you can't get like 100% efficiency. So the losses, like I say, as long as they are internal resistance, they are heat, okay, they will be losses. All right, so it's, it's more like charge discharge, you know, through this LC uh, filters. And then, uh, OK, we have gone through this. OK, how to do a simple design. All right. And then, uh, yeah, we will show that when you do the you change the duty cycle, you change the voltage. All right. And I also show that how to actually mesh, do the measurement. All right. As you can see that uh, it still have a very slight oscillation, but this is for this class purposes. I intentionally make it like 2% so that you will see. Now in real DC, DC converter or power supply, it is almost as straight as a DC battery. It does still have very low oscillation, okay? But it's not AC, it's oscillation, all right? 
So please bear in mind that, okay, AC means alternate. It will go all the way to zero to negative. And this is we consider oscillation, not AC. Huh? And efficiency, okay, very straightforward. The power, okay, of the output divided by the power input that you get the efficiency. Meaning that, you know, 100 watt in, you should have uh, I mean, theoretical should be 100 watt out, but not possible. With, let's say 99 out, you, you will you will obtain uh, this 99% uh, of efficiency. Okay, so that is the the age of this uh, converter research uh, if they are talking about efficiency. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> we talk about critical inductance. Okay, the induct the smallest value of inductor that will ensure you have continuous current. All right. So, okay, uh, we have a buck converter gain. It's a linear gain for the buck converter. And uh, we have the input impedance. Okay. Okay, these are the tutorials. And, uh, oh yeah, we have come here for the control, right? Okay, now in real buck converter, we always have a feedback control. Otherwise, you won't be able to set the, the required wattage correctly. Okay, feedback control, okay, is the same as the control theory, okay, or the control engineering. You always have a PI controller, plan, and a feedback and a reference. Now, how are we going to do that? Okay, first of all, we need to understand our plan. Okay, our plan model here, our plan model here is basically the, uh, how come is the full screen, wait, uh, It will always go to the other side and show. Okay. 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 So we have to understand the plan. Okay, so this plan is our topologies, our buck converters. Okay, now to do to model this plan, plan topologies. Okay, there are few ways of doing it. Okay, first is circuitry model. Okay, like what we did lah. We just draw the circuit or connect the circuit. That's one way. Okay. And this way will give you the most accurate model, okay, of the plant. And of course, the disadvantage is that it is it's slow, okay, it depend on how how strong or how fast is your computer. Uh, yeah, of course, it gives you the most accurate result. And secondly, it's called the average circuitry model. Okay, average means it's in between the uh, S domain and the distinct circuitry. So it will not model the switching information, so it is faster. Of course, the accuracy is moderate. And then S domain transfer function, okay, is average accuracy. Also cannot model the switching information, okay. But again, fast computation and of course, the most important is the most universal modeling, especially when you have no idea about the circuit okay you will you will see in all the control engineering control theory right they are all using the uh, s domain okay so uh, of course in power e right okay usually we will stick into these two method but i will show you this as well lah, okay usually power e because power electronic right we know the circuit control okay that will be the plan okay now, if again, now we want to control the voltage, right? All right, so this is the plan already, okay? This will be the plan. The circuit itself is the plan. Okay, the circuit itself is the plan. And then the voltage, okay? We take the voltage output, and then this is the reference voltage of 5 volt. And then the output of the differences will be going to the PI controller. And the output of the PI controller will be the PWM. Okay. And the PWM will drive okay, the MOSFET. 
And bear in mind, I just put, this is the MOSFET driver circuit. Lah, all right. I mean, in real circuit, you need a driver to drive it. All right. Uh, of course, in simulation, sometimes we ignore. Lah. So the difference between simulation and practical hardware, right? These are some knowledge you will only learn when you really implement a real hardware. Okay, but if you want to like model as real as possible, of course you can also include the driver like what I did here. Okay, now to do this uh, feedback control, okay, this is a very simple feedback control. And to tune the PI, right? Okay. You can double click this one. Okay, you will open this. And of course you need to set this to PI. Originally, it should be PID. And then we set both to one first. Huh? Okay, both to one, integral to one. And then after that, we have to press this tune button. When you press this tune button, oh, okay, I have to do the saturation first. Okay, you have to, to set the output saturation that so that the PI controller will give you maximum of one minimum of zero because our duty cycle is between zero to one. It's between zero to one. Okay, we need to say otherwise, right? Originally, it will go all the way up to 100,000 on infinity. Uh. <clears throat> so then you, you know, it will be out of control. Okay, so now what happened is that when you first run this, okay, this is what you see. Okay, this is what you see, right? This is what you see. It, it, we just simply set one one, remember? Just now. Okay, we set one one. Okay, now to do the tuning, like I say, there are few ways. Like one of the ways is use this function here. Okay, so I will show you the uh, manual method. Okay, PI control tuning manual method. Okay, manual method means set both. P and I to one. Okay, and then you will get this. So when well, you see there are very high overshoot. Okay, now we understand that overshoot is basically caused by a uh, the proportional gain. Okay, the the P the P gain. So slowly decrease the P gain. Okay, until there is no overshoot. So you decrease like 0 0.1 uh, or 0 0.9, 0 0.8 or whatever you can try, you will see this will go down. So until there is no overshoot, okay, you will end up with this. But you can see uh, the voltage become very low. This is the voltage. Uh, we want 5 watt, right? Okay, if you put 1, it overshoot to 6 watt and then come oscillate a bit, it will reach until this point. Now we have to reduce it until you know, it go up like that. No overshoot at all. Okay, there is no overshoot. Okay, first step. Second step. Okay, and you slowly increase the I. You decrease the P. Okay, until there is no overshoot, and then you increase the I until it reaches the reference voltage within the set time. Okay, set time. It's up to you. You want it to reach the set time within one second or how many seconds? Okay, it also depends on applications. Uh, normally, uh, within one second should be good enough because the moment you turn on your power supply, one second it reach, right? That is acceptable. Unless you have a very special application that you need to reach uh, the, the setting point uh, no, in like very, very short time. Mm. Now, once you do, you, you achieve that, you need to refine P and I. Okay, then you can refine P and I until you get something like that. Lah. Meaning that it will go all, all the way up to 5 volt. Okay, uh, with some oscillation. Okay, with some oscillation. So there is no definite P or definite I. Eh? For example, uh, P can be maybe 0 0.1, I can be 10. And maybe another student say, no, sir, I, 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 I get 0 0.2, 
and then this one five you will also give something like that you know maybe a little bit different that you may not notice okay now like i said as an engineer who designed this power supply you know you define okay the time in this case i set the time very fast at 0 0.01 which is 10 millisecond the moment you turn on your power supply okay you will reach this you know and it reached actually uh yeah at actually five mil around five millisecond at this point okay so that is manual tuning now i will always encourage you all to do manual tuning because along the the process uh, of you doing the tuning uh, you actually learn okay what will happen if you increase p decrease p or increase i decrease i all right in fact, uh, most of the power commercial power supplier, they are all manually turned, they are manually tuned, okay, to achieve the desire. Of course, by experienced engineer, uh, and this experience is, is depend on how much this type of design you do, okay. And then some experienced engineer, they look at it, they can even straight away tell you the a number for you to fit into P and I, then immediately you will get the result okay immediately you will get the result so okay so up to this point any questions hello any questions no question no question okay, okay good okay so maybe i do do a quick uh demo here okay so this is a feedback right and uh okay pi okay now oh, this one is already tuned okay i found that 0, 0.0 and uh, 100 is good but like i said okay if i put one one first okay one one and then i run Okay, then you will look at the output here. Okay, okay, exactly like I show. Okay, so you will find that oh wow, that's overshoot, and you cannot cannot even reach five watt. All right, then you know you have to look at it. Okay, usually overshoot, then you have to start to decrease. Okay this uh, P, right? Remember, I say, okay, let's say I start to decrease by 10 for 0 0.1. Okay, then you, okay, then you run again. And you find the wattage already go low, okay? Now you can see hey, the over, the, 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 the over, you know, uh, should also reduce, never mind. Like I said, you reduce until you know there's no overshoot. Mm. Okay, let's say okay, we know there is 0 0.01 around. Okay, 0, 0.0 may not be the lowest. Uh, it could be 0 0.02. I don't know. When I do the manual tuning, hey, it seems okay, then I would just stop there. Like I said, there is no absolute fixed value. Okay, for example, okay, no more overshoot. Okay. Then, like I say, after the P nova overshoot, you want to bring back the power, right? Okay, and the wattage to five watt. So you need to increase the integral. Okay, 10, 20, 30, slowly, and then you do it. Okay. Okay. Now you can see. Okay, it go up. In fact, if your time is long enough, it should be able to reach. But like I said. I want it to, to reach five volt at a very short time. Then of course you need to continue, continue increase in like I said, okay. In fact, maybe 10 is already enough. If you don't have, you don't need to reach the five watt at a very, uh, uh, at a very short time. Okay. So really depend on app application. Like I said, there is no fix like I is 10 is correct or 100 is correct. So it's about tuning and about the time Okay, you when you want it to reach this uh, uh, five foot. 
Okay, now you can see I reach 501M exactly. Okay, and this is how I obtain it. So manual tuning, I always encourage uh, manual tuning for real applications. All right. Okay. So the next one will be the uh, what we call this auto tuning. Now auto tuning is depend on the software you use. Okay, like MATLAB, they did come up with this so called auto tune. Okay, auto tune. Good thing is that for anyone who can tune. But the bad thing is that the auto tune line is not universal. It cannot tune everything. Huh? you know, a certain converter you still need the knowledge of manual tuning. But anyway, I will show you this is one of the features that the uh, MATLAB has. Okay, in order to use auto tune, you must have a system identification toolboxes. So you click this auto tune here. Okay, next it will show you this screen. And you go and find, you click this identify. Okay, under plan, uh, under plan, you go for identify new plan. And then it will tell you, uh, you know, not possible to identify. And then you go to get data. You simulate, okay, simulate data to obtain, okay, the response. All right. Then after that, it will tell you to do the setting. Okay, we need to set this to zero. Start time, stop time depend. Like this one, I want it to be stopped at 0 0.01. Okay, the response time must be fast. And then you run. So when you run, okay, now it will give you this response. This is the plan response, okay, the bug converter plan response, which is true, right? Remember when we have the P and I one, you will have overshoot, okay? So it will show you this plan response, okay? So that means it try to model the plan for you, okay? So. After that, okay, the plan cannot be needleized. We'll, we'll come here, no worry. Like I said, okay, uh, we will use this uh, obtain data method, lah, okay, to do it. Now, this is one of the disadvantage of this automatic method already. Ah. Mm. Okay, then you click apply, okay, and close. Then after that, it will show that, okay, this will be the, the green color will be your bug converter behavior. All right. And then how you going to make the blue line, okay, uh, fit to this one. Now it will give you some uh, S domain like K divided by, you know, S plus one. Again, how good this automatic tilting is depend on the plant model available in this uh, system identification toolboxes. Okay, this is very limited. I would say not really not all. I have tried, you know, like for example, the DCAC one cannot model at all, uh, totally. Okay, so you still need to have some experience of uh, tuning it. Okay, now in this case, okay, we have to choose this. Okay. We have to choose this one, which is called under them pair. All right, so it will look something like that, which is quite true, right? Okay, it will go over shoot, come down and oscillate. All right, so this equation, the S domain equation should be able to fit the data. Okay, the data, the bug converter we have. And what we will do is that, okay, you just click auto estimate. So it will, you see now the green and the blue line has overlap. Okay, the green and blue line has overlap. So the value to fit into this equation, the K, omega, all these, you know, all the values are here. So it fit in for you. All right, it fit in for you. Once you have this one, only the, what we call this, uh, system identification toolbox will be helpful for you to do the tuning. All right, <laughs> then click apply. All right, click apply. After that, uh, 
you can play around with this. OK, you can play around with this. All right, so these two, when you play around, you pull here and pull here, you will see that this will be our output, the thin response. OK, the thin response. OK, so when you move this left and right, right, you will find that the P and the I. Now you see, if you use this one, the P is 0 0.0027 something, and the I is 101.3. OK, so yeah, it, like my way of doing it in the manual, I know it's 0 0.01 is sufficient enough, and then 100 is sufficient enough. OK, so there's no absolute one fixed value which is correct or not correct. So the good thing is that you can play around with this. You want it to be very robust, very fast. OK, you move left and right, then you will be able, OK, to see the response. Then once you confirm, OK, you say, OK, you, you happy with this one, right? Then you just click update. Then you automatically fill in the P and I into the PI controller. Or you can just exit this uh, system identification toolboxes and then you fit in this value yourself. OK, so yeah, so this is just one of the feature uh, yeah, you can use, OK, for your PI tuning, OK, for your bug converter. But I said uh, it is not very universal because it really depends on the, the model you have, lah, all right? So I, I'm not going to do ask you all to do this. OK, so at least you all know you can actually follow the slide step by step. You should be to, able to see this. OK, and it will take some time. OK, to, to the I mean, it, 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 it run a bit slow. Lah. <laughs> mm. OK. Up to this point, any questions? Hello, give me some response, please. Uh, no, sir. OK, I thought I cannot hear you. OK, so uh, like, like this type of thing won't come out the SM, so don't worry. Uh. Well, I won't be able to ask you to do and I will give you different, different answer and but it works. OK, this is just one of the features uh, you need to know. OK, now come to S domain transfer function. OK, S domain require, you know, some understanding of the on state and off state. Now, as we know that for the bug converter, on state, this is the equivalent circuit, right? When it, the transistor turn on, right? The, the inductor and capacitor are connected in the LC. Lah, OK, that is what the uh, charging. OK, and then come here. OK, that's the on state. And during off state, OK, remember the polarity change. Huh? OK, again, this inductor will discharge. OK, and then that is how you provide the CCM, the continuous current. Even you already turn off, right? You have no voltage, no current by right if without this. But the inductor will continue to supply the current. The capacitor will continue to supply the voltage. OK, so that you will still have a DC voltage when the transistor is turned off. So there are two states to consider. So the first state of it, obviously, OK, the L, OK, is in serial with the parallel of C and R. OK, and this is how you get the first equation. And of course, you just, you know, rearrange it. You will have this one. OK, for S domain, right, we will try to put it together. So we rearrange it. You will have this one, right? And then, of course, the I, the, the current here, OK, you, you take out, OK, V equal to I R, right? So this is the impedance. OK, this is the impedance of this one. If you look carefully, you are putting a inductor, OK, and then register, and then capacitor, OK, that is during the on state. Lah. 
and you obtain the, the first part, the V in. OK, when you have turn on, right? OK, you always have the, the V in coming in. <coughs> and during turn off, OK, it's very straightforward, right? It's all three now parallel. OK, so during turn off, right? You can see it's actually your inductor become the source of current. No? <coughs> your inductor become the source of current. Your capacitor become the source of voltage. And both combine will supply the load. OK, so this is the off state. This is the on state. All right, so supply the current we have out. OK. Which is this one. OK. Now you will notice that uh, the L is missing, right? Because the L now acts as a source. OK, act as a source. So basically, you just need to do the parallel part of this. OK. And now you have V out. You have V in. OK, so the transfer function is always you know, out. OK, over in. And then you rearrange them. You will end up with the transfer function. Now transfer function can be expressed in two ways. OK, one is the standard form and other one is non-standard form. These are both same. Huh? It's just rearranged only. Huh? Because standard form always the first term, right? Always to be unity. It has to be one, which is S2, S squared. Huh? has to be one. Standard form. OK, non-standard form, it can be any number like LC square S square. Nonsense. Both are the same. It just like depend on uh, how you want to express, okay, your transfer function. Most control theory books, uh, they are always express in standard form, okay. But in power electronic, there is no rules, okay. Which one, uh, which way you want to express, okay? So yeah, it's really depend on on you, you all, uh. mm. OK, and let me stress this again. OK, remember what I said. When there are red line in any slide means that it's important. Huh? All right, so let me stress this again. How to derive this, OK, is important. All right, put a big star here for you guys. Important, OK? Now, how to import? Implement this. How to make sure that uh, you know how to implement this to see the transfer? Okay, of course there are a few ways. First way is MATLAB script. Okay, you can use MATLAB script to implement. Now we know our R is five ohm, L is this one, C is twenty five, right? So we have all the value we can substitute it. So in MATLAB, okay, our numerator is one, denominator you can write. You know, now this is in standard form, right? So as uh, S square is one. Okay, now we have the L divided by RLC. Okay, and then again one divided by LC. Then you use a function called plan, and then you put step plan, then you will be able to see this. Okay, so this represent okay your buck converter response. Okay, when you apply wattage. Then it will it will it will give you overshoot and slowly slowly come back. Okay, so you can use it use a MATLAB script method to do that. Secondly, uh, of course you can look at the uh, frequency response body plot or pole and zero maps. Okay, so these are for filtering design lah. Just just to let you know if you have the plan, you can get much more information. And then, OK, if you want to implement the same transfer function in simulating, yes, you can. OK, now in simulating, we have a plant blocks. So the plant blocks, again, uh, you just need to substitute in all the value. OK, like 8000 S is actually the result of this. Uh. OK, L divided by RLC is 8000. OK, you substitute in all this. OK, then you run in simulating 0 0.01, you will see this is the Respond, okay, of your buck converter. 
Okay, plant response are important to for this control design. Uh, so it will help you to actually uh, help you to tune the B and I. Okay, now you see if we do this, now this plant is our buck converter, right? And now you can see we have a feedback, 5 watt and a BID control. We can actually, you know, do the control here. So this is the thing I see uh, in control theory or controls engineering. This is what you all learn, right? Your lecturer always give you a plan. Okay, like I said, this plan represents a system you want to control. In our case, this plan is our buck converter, right? It's our transistor, our, our inductor, our, you know, the topology we're talking about. Okay. This is our topologies, and then of course we have the BI, and then you use this plan to help you to decide your controller. Okay. Uh, oh, current already. Okay, up to this point, okay or not? Any questions? Okay, thank you. All right, now for feedback control, what I just show here, okay, is the voltage control, right? Now, if you want to control current, yes, you can. So you just feedback the current. Ah. Now, in this case, example, ah, constant current feedback. Okay, now we want to have current. We will take the current emitter, see the current here. Okay, now I want to supply two amps to the load. Okay, instead of what uh, I want to supply 2M, you can control the current. All right, or you want to control the voltage. Now for normal power supply, like your charger, they control voltage 5 watt, right? Make sure that they don't blow up your USB. Okay, but for battery charging, okay, uh, usually they will control the current. How fast, how much current you want to charge in. All right, so in terms of what entity, of course you can control both current and uh, voltage. Now if you want to control both, you need two loops already. Like we call double loop, which, which we are not cover here. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, okay. Actually this one is supposed to be an exercise for you to play around. If I want to control 6M, I will skip this one already. Uh. Retune PI, maximum limit like load register. Okay. Okay, so the next one will be one of the example for simple battery charge controller. Okay, like, okay, now this, you can see this is a buck converter. Okay, right? Okay, buck converter, and I put a battery here. Okay, then for battery, like I said, we measure the current that go into the battery. So I want to charge this battery constantly at 1 amp. Okay, so I can set up charge 1 amp. All right. Now let's say this battery is 1 amp hour. So you charge it at 1 amp means in one hour, the battery will be from 0 to 100% full. Now if you, want, if you want to charge the battery, okay, in half an hour from 0 to 100%, you need to increase the ampere to 2 amp. Okay, if the battery is one amp hour, okay, our normal uh, one amp hour battery. This is the concept of how this fast charger work. You have to know, okay, your battery can be charged one amp hour, one hour, one ampere, it will be full in one hour. So if I want to charge this battery full in half an hour, I need to double the current that go into the go into the battery. All right. So, okay, so one of the application, okay, of uh, controlling the current is the uh, battery chargers, okay. Typical applications, all right. Now, all these buck converter thing, I announced today they already have the chip, okay. So these are the chip, right? okay, you can see LM2596, you can buy this chip. Okay, so inside already got a transistor and the PI, everything is inside this chip already. What you need to do is that you just need to get the diode, the inductor, and the capacitor. All right, 
Now you see, this is the inductor, a small inductor. This is the capacitor. Okay, and of course, this chip is a five pin chip. Uh. The input chip, two ground, one fit. Uh, this is a feedback chip. Okay, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So they are five pin chip. Okay, and usually this one uh, switching at a very high frequency of 100 uh, kilohertz. Okay, because of low power. Uh, like I see. So typical application. All right, now you can see the inductor capacitor and the diode are not built in. Why? Remember, you use the different diode, you actually change the efficiency, right? Okay, so choose the diode wisely. 1N5824, yeah, it's shocky diode, this one. All right, so this is one of the typical small application in many of our electronic devices. Okay, so uh, this is another example. Okay, like I said, the inductor, the diode, capacitor, and of course the feedback control. The rest, the PI, everything, now they already built in the gym. That's why they tune everything nicely for you already. So these are the commercial available, okay, uh, what we call these uh, plug converters. Okay, there are applications. Now, one of the application is the solar PV charge controller. I'm talking about standalone, I'm not grid connected. Huh? Okay, so when your PV come in, okay, so charge controller is basically a DC DC controller. We call DC DC lah. Now. Okay, DC DC uh, converter. So you when you open up this, right, you will actually see that oh, you see the inductor that uses is very, very huge. Okay, now because it's switching at low frequencies. And then uh, charge controller require a big inductor to, you know, to discharge, you know, the currents, okay, to the load. So they will usually have a very, very huge uh, inductor. Okay, hardware implement, again, sorry, this semester, no hardware uh, implementation. So we'll skip the entire hardware part, huh? okay, because this one can actually be made hardware using Arduino. Huh? Okay, you can program all this, we will skip the whole part here yeah, because the good thing of MATLAB, right? You can actually install this coder thing, right? So you can directly program into hardware. So all the PI thing, right? That built inside the chip, right, you can actually program yourself, okay? In, uh, you know, using this audio, you know? So anyway, how, unless you want to do it yourself, otherwise I would just skip the hardware part already. Mm. Rapid control, okay, this one. Okay, now, summary of the buck converter. Okay, so as we know that buck converter has a very high efficiency, which is greater than 90%. And then uh, the buck converter load can be, load current can be higher than the source. And the DIDT of the load current is limited by inductor, okay, and the input current is discontinued, okay, and can be smoothing input filter. And of course, it will provide only one polarity. That's mean the polarity won't change, uh, and unidirectional. Okay, so with that, we should wrap up the buck converters. Now, the rest of the converter, okay, will be based on the same principle. So you won't see that much detail anymore. I won't talk about like uh, how to tune all these things. Okay, but I will show you the different topologies. Okay, because the next will be the boost converter already. So yeah, any questions for the bar converter so far? You really need to understand because the rest of the chapter I don't go into that detail. You know. Okay, so now it's around nine already. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, show you all how to use Plex, lah, huh? say simple Plex. Okay, and then maybe you all can try, okay, and see how. All right, now let us just, uh, okay, let me just start my Plex here.
Okay. So when you set flex, all right. Uh, yeah, you will have two windows come out. Lah. Okay, of course, uh, I usually close this one. Okay, I will just put a new model. Okay, so you open up a new border. So let's do the buck converter right now. Okay, now buck converter. Okay, a few things. You only need control, electrical, and system. Now you go to electrical. Then of course, uh, yeah, we can have a you know most fed or IGBT. Okay, so maybe I will just click this one without the. Uh, Okay, the, the component and then of course you can rotate them. Okay, you can uh, left, right. Okay, we rotate them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, we rotate them and then, uh, okay, we need a diode, right? So put a diode here. And you find, uh, yeah, we have a register. Drag it over here. Inductor. Capacitor. Okay. And then, yeah. Then we will rotate. Okay. So you co just connect them. Okay. The good thing is that the drawing is very nice uh, because it's designed for power E. Uh. So, you know, after you, do, you can use it for your schematic drawing. Okay, schematic drawing. Okay, and then you need a source, right? Electrical source. Uh, okay, we okay the DC source. Okay, so we get a source DC source. Get the DC source. Okay, and then uh, okay we need a pulse generator. Pulse generator is under control. Okay, it's under source. You can see that even the symbol is the same, like MATLAB power generator. Okay, so this is a power generator. Okay, then you connect them. Okay, you connect them. Okay, so now change this to 12 volt. Uh, this one I think is 325, right? Okay, micro. This one is 25 micro. Now we just based on the MATLAB value. Lah. And then this is 5 ohm. OK, OK. So now we want to see the current and the voltage, right? So you can go to electrical, go to meter. In the meter, we have a voltage. Okay, these are the voltage measurement. Okay, and then we have air meter. Okay. Okay. To rotate. down okay and then we are going to put a scope okay and then we need to see both right double click the scope go to scope parameters and then you want to see a two different scope no. Okay, so one for the current, one for the wattage. 
oops. For, uh, one for the voltage. Okay, so, okay, pulse generator. Okay, our frequencies. What's the frequency already? Uh, for this, uh, this, uh, okay, let me check, I also forgot. <laughs> Okay, what is the frequency? Oh, 20. Okay, so 20 kilohertz. So frequency is 20 K, 20 kilohertz. Uh, duty cycle 0 0.5 or 0 0.41, right? Just now, okay, we just put the 0 0.5 first. Uh, okay, I think the rest will be okay. Okay, I think everything's set already. Then go simulation, set the time. Now. We got, by default, it's one second. Now we want to see 0 0.01. Uh, the rest, we don't do the chain. We got not much solver for you to, and then you can start sim simulating. So once you simulate it, okay, then you can see the output. Okay, you can see the output here. Okay, you will see a similar output. Oops. Okay, you will see the current the ballet, uh, <laughs> because the polarity wrong already. Need to reverse it. Left, right. Okay. Okay. So double click. Okay, so we can run it fast. See, it's almost immediate. Uh. There's no waiting time, 0 0.1 or all this, especially when you run for a very, very long time. And of course, here, if I change to 0 0.41 or 42, right? Then, okay, it's around 5 volt. Uh, and then, of course, you want to see the voltage, right? Like, like, like uh, in in this uh, simulation, yes, you can. Okay, so they are display as well. Okay, and then we have to look at the average, right? So average and the control, and the filters. So you can choose moving average or periodic average, RMS value. You know, it's all here. Okay, and. Okay, averaging time, okay, will be your frequency one over, okay, 20K. Okay, there will be your averaging time. Right. How come? Ah, okay. Five watt. Okay. So this is how you do that. Very simple and straightforward. Okay. Come, let's do it and show me in your, uh, in the chat, you know, in the chat box. This should be very, very straightforward. Hmm. And of course, you want to do feedback control, so can ah. Uh, uh, they are PI controller, okay. Uh, PI controller, I think somewhere here. Ah, uh, see, PI controller. They are modulator, okay. So the symmetrical uh, PWM, remember? Okay, you can still use a symmetrical PWM for your uh, output. Okay, symmetrical PWM. And then of course the plus minus thing, uh, the mathematics is here. Okay, the sum subtracts. Okay, it's actually the same as the one that we use in my lab, you know, uh, the sum subtract plus multiplication, they are all here. So you can also do the simple feedback control. Okay, just to get yourself familiar with all these basic things, all right? So yeah, so try to do it now.
and show me the checkbox. Uh, sir? Yes. Did you change the value for the inductor capacitor and resistance? Uh, yes, of course. I have to change according to yeah, 325 and uh, 25. Because this one is the value that we designed for the MATLAB. Okay. okay. Uh, and and uh, what is the step time? Step down what? Step time, time for the simulation. Step time, I didn't change this. Oh, the time span is 0 0.01. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is like, just to give you a short, fast comparison of, uh, you know, MATLAB and, uh, okay, if we look back at MATLAB, uh, not this one, I think, the one that originally, Okay, comforter when uh. Okay, so this is the MATLAB version of it. Okay, so when you run. Okay. Oh, I have split into different windows. I mean, when you see this, right? Okay, this one. Okay, this one is actually this one. Okay, and of course, the one at the bottom here is this one. So one is the MATLAB version of it. Okay, one is the Plex version of it. Like I said, uh, yeah, each of them have their own strength and weaknesses. Okay, uh, this one is designed for power E. That's why the schematic look nicer, lah. Okay. Well, sir, for the flex, right? We don't need mm. to put the electrical references and that like the grounding. Uh, no need. The beauty of Plex, right? They, you know, they already know that you are going to do power E, so you don't need to put like electrical reference, solver, all this kind of thing. No need to worry about it. Just circuit and run. Mm. Okay. MATLAB requires solver, and all this is because, uh, you know, it cater for many too many things already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, another, uh, okay, I don't think so. It will cause problem now. Okay, because our license, right, available to us is only 50, 5, 0. So if there are more than five, 50 students trying to run Plex right now, right, the 51 student won't be able to run. It will tell you, or oh, uh, license not available or reach the maximum kind of thing. Okay, why well, usually our class will be less than 50 students who really try to do it now, so I don't have worry. Mm. But just in case, suddenly you all, you know, become so hardworking. <laughs> mm. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I can see no challenge at all, right? Should be very straightforward. Okay. Okay. It seems even faster, right? When you all use this one to do this compared to use the one in CV, I'm not sure. Uh, so fast is not about the simulation time only, about the time you all use to create this uh, uh, simple, you know, bug converters. Of course, there are a lot of things you all can still slowly explore. There are many functions 
scopes, you know, you can explore using this uh, Plex. And your assignment is the grid connected inverter. So yeah, I would say it's pretty much straightforward. Lah. Hmm. You see, they also have the PLL, single phase or three phase PLL. So, all the component BID, they got discrete and continuous as well. All right. So, if let's say I just put the BID here, you know, then you can, it's the same. You see, you can just change the BI and the B and the gain. Okay. Then, Tune accordingly. Okay. Uh, saturation limits constant. Okay. And then, like I said, okay, you need to set the upper to one, the lower to to zero. Okay, for the P and the PI controller, or else, uh, this is important, uh, Okay, you have to do that just like in your MATLAB. Otherwise, you will go all the way beyond one hundred percent of duty cycle. Then you will cause problem with your system. Or you go all the way below zero and then go to negative. Okay, then you will have problem. All right. Okay. And then what else we have? Mm, yeah, I think the thing is quite okay. Constant, constant. Ah, uh, they also have a constant block. Okay. They also have a constant block and then uh, modulator, okay, which will be either symmetrical or sawtooth, both will do. Okay, and a plus minus, you can do the feedback already. Okay, and then you can just do the feedback here. And uh, then of course you need to set the frequency, okay. Okay, so yeah. So for DC DC converter, right? Uh, the control PWM is much more straightforward than as compared to DC AC. Well, DC AC we have to deal with SPWM. Okay, so for DC DC, it's just a simple uh, PWM. All right. And then you can save it. And uh, of course for the scope, right? It also have the function like the, you know, you can do this uh, measurement, you see? Measurement all this two line. You can show like I show in the MATLAB. Okay. Quite a lot of function here. Like find the delta minimum, maximum value and so forth. And then, uh, okay, we have a zoom function also. Okay, you can zoom in, zoom out. Okay, you can zoom in until you can see all the small, small, small thing. I can click this one, it will back to normal. So there are videos, okay, to, to uh, like say in YouTube and in Plex to show you, you know, how to use, use all this. They even have a built-in Fourier transform here. Okay, this is like the GUI FFT thing, lah. Okay, so they have all these built-in functions in the uh, in the scope as well. Okay. Okay, all right, so yeah, at least you all have a feel of this uh, plex already. Shouldn't be any problem. Still got 10 minutes, okay. Lah. I, maybe we need to move on already because really 
running out of time. Okay. This is week number nine. Yeah. Okay, PI, so. Okay, we see the application of all this. Okay. Let's skip the hardware part. All right, now we come to a boost converter. Okay, so boost converter, like you say boost, right? Meaning that you can step out the output voltage. Okay, if your output voltage is five volt and you want a 12 volt output, so you can choose to use a boost converter to do that. It will boost up the voltage, all right? But of course, the power conservation is still there. When your voltage go up, your current will go down, right? So, you know, the boost converter load current is actually lower than the source current. So there's something uh, you cannot boost both voltage and current at the same time, meaning that you're increasing the power already, right? You cannot have a 100 watt in, 200 watt out, no way. Okay, so it, the power should be the same or within the efficiency. So as we know that power, okay, is you have to remember when you do, you do this uh, converter thing, uh, Okay, this is your converter. Okay, your power in and your power out. Okay, assume hundred percent efficiency. Ah, huh? we got ten watt in, we got ten watt out. No matter bug or boost, this watt is governed by current and wattage, P equal to IV. So when your V is go up, your I will go down in order to make the 10 watt, right? Similarly, like the buck converter, your V is go down, your I will go up. So you have to be very careful about what you want. You want high wattage or high current. You cannot have both both up okay so that is something that you need to think you cannot say wow five volt i can create 12 volt wow. then you know the, the you have to sacrifice the current okay you have to sacrifice the current so now we come to the topologies still uh, we will have an inductor and capacitor the only difference is that the position of the transistor and the diode change okay the position of the transistor and the diode change. All right, now how this work? Okay, again, first of all, when the transistor is turned on, it charge the inductor in this way. Okay, it go through the ground and charge, right? So you can see when it turn on, okay, the inductor will charge. All right. And then when it turn off, okay, now you can see uh, the inductor polarity change. Uh, initially, the plus is here. Now when it turn off, the polarity change to discharge, right? See the discharge. And what happened is that, now assume uh, if I have a 12 volt here, okay, I charge the inductor. When I turn off, I discharge the inductor. Now I still have a 12 watt here. My inductor will give me approximately 12 watt as well. Right? And plus minus and this one plus minus, you see, that's mean this 12 watt, the source 12 watt and the inductor 12 watt will be added in series. So when it come over here, you will get 24 volt output. This is how the boost converter work. 12 volt in, 24 volt out because of this. Okay, carefully, okay, charging. All right, when you start, when this is turned on, right, all the current will fall, go down here. Okay, all the current will go down here, okay, to charge the inductor. Turn off, 
the inductor will discharge. And then together with the supply voltage, you will have a higher okay, voltage here. So this is how the boost. So the inductor play a very, very important role in buck and boost converter. Okay, now similarly, we come to the design. Okay, now we want to have a 5 volt input and 12 volt output. Okay, so the equation is this 1 minus V in over V out. So the duty cycle will be 0 0.583. Okay, again, switching frequency is 20 kilohertz. IL, 40% same. Okay, VC, 2% same. And again, okay, there are two equations to govern, okay, uh, the, the L and C, okay, which is here. Of course, you need to find the duty cycle first. Huh? Okay, you need to find the duty cycle. And after that, okay, this one we will do it in the next class already. Lah, huh? We will do it in the next class. Okay, so uh, yeah. Again, we will, we can actually, uh, you know, you can use your buck converter and just change this two position immediately become a, a boost converter already. And then you can have like a 5 volt in, a 12 volt out. Okay, similarly, okay. We can actually measure the voltage output. Okay, or the current, sorry, not the voltage, the current. All right, uh, the peak, okay, and the, the lower, of course, like you can see that it's not touching the zero, right? So it is operating in CCM, okay, continuous current, okay. Okay, capacitor voltage, which is the output, all right. Again, this one will be the uh the output okay because it's two percent you can still see some some this uh, rippling effect okay uh, i think i put the same okay this inductor current okay okay this is the yeah this is the voltage here okay now the boost converter also have the same critical inductor uh thing okay these are the equation which is the lowest inductor value you can use for CCM okay, operation. All right, so similarly, uh, the lowest value, it just touches zero. Uh, okay, and any value lower than that, it was, you will see, it will start to have discontinuity here already. Okay, it will have discontinuity. Okay, now the boost converter gain is not a linear function anymore. Okay, it's one over one minus E. So it's a exponential function. All right. As you see, your duty cycle of 10%, you know, if your input is one volt, lah, okay, you give it one point something. And along the way, okay, you will see that in theory, uh, it will go up to infinity. Uh. That means I give you a one volt, 1.5 volt AA battery. Okay, you can actually boost it up to 240 watt if you want. Okay, if you want, yes. So yeah, in theory, okay, it should be, you know, exponentially until infinite. Yeah. All right, so that is the boost converter. Okay. Of course, usually the range of operation will be within like 85% here. Lah. Okay, it depends on how much voltage you want to boost. Lah. Okay. This is the more stable range of operation. Okay, input impedance, same thing. Okay, uh, you know, it will change the input impedance. Okay, and the equation are here. All right, so it's an inverse function. Okay, of a buck. All right, the input impedance. Efficiency. Still the same, okay. You just need to measure the input power over output power, all right. This one, oh yeah, I because I still I didn't I say lah the socky diode play a very important role here, okay. Here is around eighty seven percent. Okay, you change the socky, it will definitely go more than ninety percent. Okay, tutorial. This one do it at home, okay. Just to do some simple calculation on it instead of. 5 watt to 12 watt, I put 3.3 to 5 watt. 
okay, and so forth. You just do the calculation yourself for exercise purposes. Okay, feedback control. Okay, like I said, uh, yeah, the same thing. You you will have a feedback to how many voltage and so forth to control the transistor, and you can do okay uh, the feedback control. Okay, of course I don't. You see, I don't talk about the PI tuning anything already, so it's the same. Okay, you have to do manual tuning. Okay, until you reach the the, the auto tune. If I'm not mistaken, cannot tune for the boost converter. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, boost converter in commercial, yes, like I say, it's the same like about converter. They already have a chip. Okay, and this is the inductor capacitor and so forth. Like you can see, this is the schematic. They always come up with the product with five pin where you know PI everything is inside here already. Okay, so yeah, MBR748. Okay, this is a socket diode. Lah. If you want to follow exactly the design, you can follow this one. Okay, okay, boost converter. Okay, boost converter usually used in what where it's used in the grid connected string inverter. Okay, at the front end DC DC type where the PV string come in. And a boost converter summary. Okay, so boost converter can step up the output voltage without using a transformer. Remember, when you want to step up, step down, usually you know, always we will use transformer to do that. But boost converter no need. Okay, you use a transistor inductor switching, then you can boost it. Okay, uh, okay, uh, outload current is lower. Okay, uh, input current is continuous. Uh, okay, I think the rest quite straightforward. Uh, the upper board is very sensitive to the change in duty cycle. Ah, uh, okay. This one, like I mentioned just now, when you're operating at a very high duty cycle for this uh, part converter, right? As long as it go higher, 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 right? The change of this little chain of the duty cycle will cause a great change in the in the output. Okay, so that's what it means by the sensitivity. Okay, very sensitive to the change in duty cycle and it might difficult to stabilize the regulator. That's why you don't go like too high gain. Okay, then you will have stability problem. Okay, okay, I think we'll stop here. The next one is the buck boost already. Lah. Mm. I have to be fast buck boost and then uh, fly back. Okay, then we need to move on to the other two converter. Two weeks to, okay, should be enough time. As long as I skip those exercises. Uh. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you. Like I said, uh, please do it at home. You know, the, the boost converter, just change your bug and you can try it in Plex as well. All right. Okay. All right, so okay, okay, already three nine thirty already. Okay, so uh, if no question, okay, then we will end the class today. Okay, thank you.